So this is John's grandmother, Abigail, and this is Grandfather Thaddeus. Mother Burgess, this is the first time I've seen pictures of my husband's family. When I go back home tomorrow, I can tell John I've met them all. <laughs> John's resemblance to his grandmother is quite remarkable. Let me show you. Isn't she pretty? Your mother, of course. What a young looking woman. Somehow one always thinks of grandmothers as elderly. Have you any other pictures of her? None that show her older. You see, my mother died when I was born. Mother! Oh, mother! Oh, mother! Oh, hello there. Mother, yes, Ruth is inviting me to a beach house for a swimming party next weekend. May I go? Next weekend? Let me see. Do you think you'll be able to go? Oh, well, can I go anyway? Not into the weather, my dear. Oh, Mary, isn't it a shame? I've been looking forward to this for so long. I know how you feel, dear. But never mind, maybe you'll be invited for next weekend. Oh, why do girls always have the worst of everything? I've explained, Alice. Cold water at such a time is very dangerous. Why is it? I can't go into that without telling you all the details of menstruation. Well, why don't you, Mother Burgess? I wish my mother had explained it to me. Oh, I know all about it. In a general way, Alice. But you don't understand the true meaning of menstruation. Oh, here's where Mother pulls out that horrid old book again. <laughs> well, it ought to be a good book. Dr. Setzer recommended it. Alice, come sit beside me. This will be as much a lesson to me as to you. Now, this is the outline of a woman. The important parts of her reproductive system are placed within her body so that they may be protected from injury. The two small organs, situated on opposite sides of the body, are called the ovaries. One is in cross section so that you can see what is happening. Unless a woman had ovaries, Alice, there never would be any children. The ovaries are connected with the uterus by the fallopian tube. The uterus, or womb, is an important organ. For it is here that a baby can live and grow for nine months. It has a small opening which connects with the vagina. Once each month, an ovum matures. Within the ovary, we see a maturing ovum ready for discharge. It is forced out and goes into the fallopian tube. It isn't that big, is it, Mother? It's so small that you can see it only with a microscope. During the course of two or three days, it travels down the tube to the uterus. But all the while, the uterus has been getting ready to receive it. You may notice that the walls have become thicker. But in most cases, and certainly up until the time when you are married, the ovum, as it has not been fertilized, dies soon after it leaves the ovary. When it dies, what happens, Mother? The thickened uterus does not receive a fertilized ovum. And shortly thereafter, your menstrual period begins. This loss of blood or menstruation takes place periodically, and the uterus returns to its initial state. I still don't see why I can't go swimming. Cold water at menstruation time would be a shock which might disturb your period, possibly give you cramps. Especially during the first day or two, it's best not to play or run or dance too much, but get all the rest you can. All right, Mother, I suppose you know best. <laughs> I have to call up Nancy and tell her I can't go. <laughs> That's a good girl. Poor kid. I suppose she'll only appreciate such things when she's as old as I am. I know I'm grateful for your explanation, Mother Bridget. Perhaps you're wondering why I take the trouble to tell Alice all these things. It's what every mother should tell her daughter. The thing that surprises me is that you know so much about it and are able to explain it so well. I think because my mother died when I was born, the whole subject has always been in my mind. When I was a very young girl and realized I had no one to turn to, I determined that nothing like that would ever happen to me or to any of my family. Where did you gather all this information, Mother Bridget? From our family doctor. No one could have given me better advice or wiser counsel. Do, do many women die in childbirth? Why do you ask? I'm terribly worried about something. 
Really? Don't tell me you're going to have a baby. That's wonderful. Oh. <laughs> That's the grandest news, and what a surprise, too. Aren't you happy? Yes, but I... Oh, there, Mary. You mustn't be frightened with us. What happened to my mother? Took place a long time ago, and under very different conditions. Why, in those days, women didn't even talk about these things. And often, a doctor wasn't consulted until the last moment. And sometimes it was too late. Medical science has come a long way since then. Yes, but I can't get over the feeling of being, oh, tied down. Yes, and for such a long time. But you want a baby, don't you? Oh, of course I do. Well, then there's nothing to worry about. Think what medical care is today. Doctors now know much more than even in my time. Of course. Having a baby isn't exactly fun. But you put yourself in the hands of a good doctor in the very beginning, have him instruct you step by step, and you and your baby have nothing to worry about. Then there's poor John. He's trying so many things for us to do together. Why, haven't you told him yet? Not yet. Well, if I know my boy, he'll be the happiest man in the world. Oh, Mary, do you remember that mom for a chocolate cream pie recipe? Yes, and I'm planning one for Sunday dinner. What does mom say about our vacation plan? Wait a minute, I'll be right in. Look, honey. Route 7 will take us all the way to Canada. Then it's just that. <laughs> Would you go away and let me figure out our vacation trip? Oh, I don't like vacation trips. You don't like vacation trips? Well, you're the one who suggested it. Well, can a girl change her mind? Mary, what's come over you? John, do you still want baby? You mean... You mean we're going to... Are you sure? I'm almost certain. I'm going to see Dr. Wilson first thing in the morning. Mary Bridges, I'm glad to see you. Hello, Julia. Sit down, Mary. Do you want to see Dr. Wilson? Yes, I can. He'll see you in just a moment. The main thing, Mrs. Perry, is to get plenty of rest. To tell Mr. Perry, I'd like him to drop in and see me for a little chat. He's very busy these days, Doctor. Tell him to find time. This is quite important. Oh, Mrs. Bridges, glad to see you. Would you step in? I haven't seen you for a long time. How's been getting along? Oh, fine. John and I have been awfully busy getting that was. You see, I left my period. When were you supposed to menstruate? Well, I, I've just missed my second period. I think I'm going to have a baby. That's fine. Now I know exactly why you came to see me. Yes? You're right in coming to see me at the very beginning of your pregnancy. So many women postpone visiting their doctors until late in their pregnancy. Sometimes this may result in various processes getting underway, which may cause much difficulty later on. I understand, doctor. Medical attention throughout pregnancy also gives the baby every advantage. If all women would go to their physicians early, Many disappointments and broken hearts could be averted. I want to do everything to assure me of a normal and healthy child. You have every right to expect one. Dr. Wilson, my husband and I want a baby very much. And now that I think I'm going to become a mother, I, oh, I want to learn everything I possibly can, especially how a baby's life begins. 
I'm glad you're interested in knowing something about your own body. All women are interested, but few take the trouble to find out. Before life can begin, there must be a union of the male cell and the ovum. The ovum contains all the inherited characteristics of the mother, and the head of the spermatozoan contains all the inherited characteristics of the father. The long tail is for the purpose of locomotion, as the spermatozoan must seek and find the ovum, which has no power of locomotion at all. When ovulation occurs, and during the time that the ovum is in the fallopian tube, the spermatozoa deposited in the vagina pass through the cervix and upward as they sink the ovum. Do you follow me, Mrs. Burgess? What's well, tremendously interesting, Doctor. Only one spermatozoan can unite with the ovum, and as soon as fertilization takes place, a tremendous growth impulse results, and a new life begins. The fertilized ovum promptly divides into two cells. Soon thereafter there are four cells, then eight, and so on, until the original single cell has grown and multiplied to many times its original size. During the multiplication of the cells, the ovum completes its passage to the uterus, and there attaches itself to the soft tissue as the process of growth continues. Thus, a new life begins, which, in spite of the fact that it's not generally recognized, takes on human form within 12 weeks after conception. And that's the story. In order that we may be forewarned of coming events, let us get as complete a picture as possible. Your married name is? Mrs. John B. Burgess. Is your father living? Yes. His age? Fifty-six. Is he well? Yes. And your mother? She died ten years ago. And what did she die of? Well, I think the doctor said she had high blood pressure. Hmm. Hypertension. <laughs> Hello? Yes, this is Dr. Wilson. Oh. Uh, what can I do for you? Doctor, I'm very upset. Can I see you today? Shall we say four o'clock? All right. Goodbye. Now, let me see. Have you had any trouble with your teeth, Mrs. Burgess? No, not that I know of. Oh, well, it's a good plan to have your dentist check your teeth now. And be sure and tell them of your condition. Have you had any acute illnesses, such as rheumatism or tonsillitis? Yes, I, I used to suffer with tonsillitis frequently, but I had my tonsils out two years ago. Have you had any other operations? No. Diphtheria or scarlet fever in childhood? No. And these facts are very important now, you know. Well, did you and uh, Mr. Burgess have a physical examination before you were married? No, we didn't know that was necessary. Every couple planning a marriage should have a thorough physical examination, especially to make sure that there's no venereal disease. Venereal disease is so prevalent, so frequently unsuspected, and can do so much harm. Prepare Mrs. Burgess for examination this morning. Step on the scale, please. Now, 
1,717. That's right. Now, will you sit on the examining table, please? Deeply, please. Again, please. Lie down, please. Relax, please. Eleven inches. Prepare for further examination. Yes, Mrs. Burgess, you are going to have a baby and everything's fine. We need a small sample of your blood and then we're through. Oh, no, this will just take a second. Now, you just look out the window and don't watch me. All right, Mary. No albumin or sugar in this specimen, Miss Norton. The urine is normal. Well, I'll be right with her. I want to check for anemia. I guess that's about all. 
I'd like you to come back every four weeks so I can see if everything is going satisfactorily. The nurse will give you an appointment and uh, I'll tell you to bring a specimen on your next visit. Oh, thank you. I'll try to make my visits regular. Oh, but before I go, Doctor, should I be very quiet and stay at home all the time? I feel pretty good and I've always been active. No, I think you can do almost anything you did before you became pregnant. Uh, unless I should advise you differently later on. But I wouldn't take any strenuous exercises like horseback riding, but uh, moderate exercises like walking are desirable. Well, that's fine, Doctor. Uh, you may even play a little golf in moderation. You don't take any setting up exercises? Sometimes. Well, if you do, avoid vigorous trunk and abdominal exercises and stick to arm and leg movements. In other words, do anything that you did at any other time, only be careful. And for goodness sake, don't regard the next few months as a period for intensive training for a boxing match. Don't start any new physical activities or do anything that is going to tire you excessively. Avoid constipation, but don't take cathartics without my advice. Don't take any long automobile trips, but it's all right for short rides on good roads. Be sure and sleep eight hours every night. And relax for one hour in the middle of the day. Oh, um, do I have to sleep by myself, or...? That's a perfectly natural question, and the answer depends somewhat on your feelings. There is no objection to marital relations in moderation. Thank you. Of course, after the six months, the answer is no. I'll remember that, Doctor. And thanks for everything. Romney, Doctor. Ask her to come in, please. This is Romney. Please be seated. Now, what seems to be the trouble, Mrs. Romney? Doctor, I'm pregnant. Hmm, that's interesting. Why do you think so? I've already missed my period. I don't want a baby. How long have you been married, Mrs. Romney? Three years. My husband doesn't want a child. We both have jobs and we can't afford a baby anyway. I'm sorry, but I can't do anything about it. Oh, doctor, please give me some medicine so I won't have a baby. I don't like to hear talk like that because the greatest privilege in the world is to have a child of your own. There's no medicine I could give you that would do you any good. I wouldn't be party to a criminal abortion and I wouldn't be willing to destroy an innocent life. One that wants and deserves to live. Doctor, I'm going to do something if you won't help me. A friend of mine did it and it worked. If you won't help me, I'll find someone who will. Intentional abortions are against the law. Psychic such operations are very dangerous, much more dangerous than childbirth. If you attempt to cause an abortion, the danger to your own life would be very, very grave. Many women who have tried to cause abortions upon themselves have been rushed to the hospital at the last moment in a desperate endeavor to stop the terrific loss of blood and save their lives. I didn't know it was that dangerous. Yes, indeed. Such things frequently happen. In other cases, infection sets in to be followed by peritonitis, and the patient dies an agonizing death from blood poisoning. Over one-fourth of all maternal deaths are from infected abortions. That means about 4,000 women yearly. Only last week I saw just such a case, after a woman had tried to cause an abortion upon herself. The uterus was punctured, there was a severe hemorrhage, peritonitis developed. We did everything we could to save her, but it was no use. Her husband's heart was broken. He loved her and he wanted a baby, even though she didn't. <laughs> oh, it's a queer world. Some women who are given the blessed privilege of successfully bearing children don't want them. Others who yearn for children are often denied them. You say you've been married three years? Yes, Doctor. You have a good husband? Yes, and we love each other dearly. What a fortunate woman you are. But Doctor Wilson, we can't afford a baby. Uh, does your husband own a car? Oh, yes. Do you own your own home? Yes, but we haven't got it entirely paid for yet. It's nicely furnished, isn't it? Not as well as it will be when we have more money. Where did you go on your vacation, Mrs. Bromley? We went to Canada for two weeks. They had a lovely cabin on one of the mountain lakes. My dear woman, need I say more? Dr. Wilson wants to see me next week. 
I've already noted the appointment. It's 11 o'clock Tuesday morning, Mrs. Martin. Thank you. All right, Mr. Perry. Good morning. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Julia. You're right, Mary, this morning. Well, how are you feeling today? Oh, I'm just a little bit tired. I think I've been doing so much lately. Doctor will be ready for you shortly. When a woman is expecting a baby, she should be treated with every consideration and tenderness. Yeah, but Doc, I ain't got much time. You see, I gotta get up at four every morning. I understand that you have your problems, Mr. Perry, but we're discussing Mrs. Perry. At a time like this, even though she were able to do her share of the work, she must never be made to tire herself excessively. And you should be the one to insist on it. Yeah, but Doc, when you got a big family... Mr. Perry, I'm going to speak plainly. You weren't any too considerate of your wife's health when she was carrying your other children. The result is she's breaking under the strain of hard work and continuous childbearing. Your wife has had four children in the last five years. While a few women can bear children at such frequent intervals, most of them cannot. Well, what do you want me to do, Doc? Be considerate of your wife. And when the baby comes, see that she's given at least two weeks rest, free from all worry and work. You're working and making money. You can afford to employ someone for two or three weeks, can't you? Sure, I can do that. Well, help her in this way. And keep her healthy. Your wife's health means everything to your children. Thanks, Doc. Goodbye. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Burgess. Oh, good morning, Doc. Would you come in? How are you feeling today? Pretty well, Doctor. Just that I feel as big as a barrel. Am I going to get any larger, Doctor? I shouldn't be surprised. Something seems to be moving inside of me. Does that mean the baby's almost ready to be born? No, it'll be some time yet. During the past month, the baby has been growing. Three months after you conceived, it was only three inches in length. Uh, let me show you these pictures. These charts show the change in the size of the baby before it is born. Three months after conception, the new life is very tiny, as you see. But it grows rapidly and naturally occupies more and more space. Gradually, you notice yourself becoming larger to accommodate the child. You are now at your sixth month. So you can see from these drawings about how much more you can expect your baby to grow. Suppose my baby was born at seven months. Well, I don't think you need worry about that. Even premature babies nowadays live and grow normally. Of course, the longer the baby remains in the uterus, the larger, heavier, and stronger it'll be at birth. So you mustn't be annoyed at losing your figure. I'll be glad to advise you about exercise and other measures to restore your figure after the baby is born. In the uh, meantime, I think you should have a special brazier to support the weight of the breast. And also an abdominal binder, which will help support the weight of the baby and at the same time relieve some of the strain on your back. Mm, my back hurts badly at times, Doctor. I'll have Miss Norton instruct you with regard to the proper support. Mm -hmm. Miss Norton, will you show Mrs. Burgess our demonstration abdominal and back support corset and also the maternity bras there? Yes, Doctor. type of brassiere shaped in cup form is designed in several sizes and gives great support to the breast. It needs to be sure it's not too tight. How does it feel, Mary? Oh, it's very comfortable, Julia. Now this abdominal back support corset 
is very firmly built up in the back so that it may be effective in supporting your pelvis and relieving your backache. Now on this side in the front, the straps are adjustable so that as the baby grows, it may be allowed more room and at the same time, give the abdominal muscles support and the extra weight is more evenly distributed. What a difference that makes. Mrs. Burgess, have you had a tendency to stumble at all? No, not particularly. You can expect some trouble a little later on, which is natural. The baby will get much larger, of course. Look here. This will give you some idea of the changes that have taken place and what the future holds. This is the outline of a normal woman. When conception occurs, the uterus is within the pelvis. At six weeks, the embryo is unformed, but it becomes human in form at the early age of 12 weeks. The uterus continues to rise until, by the sixth month, it fills the lower abdomen. As pregnancy progresses, the growth of the fetus necessitates the patient leaning backward to counterbalance the increasing weight of a growing child. Some women fall during pregnancy unless they are careful because of the greater difficulty in walking erect. Then, toward the end of pregnancy, the baby drops lower in the pelvis, and you will find that your breathing becomes much easier. Dr. Wilson, why is the baby upside down? Now, Mrs. Burgess, that's a long story, and I'll tell you about it sometime. There's something else more important right now. Did you weigh Mrs. Burgess? Yes, Doctor. I've already entered it in her case history. Good. I'll just take a look at the chart. Have you followed the diet I suggested a month or two ago? Yes, but it's mighty hard for me to take milk, Doctor. Well, milk is one of our best sources of calcium. However, if you can't drink milk, you can take it in various other forms, such as cheese, buttermilk, ice cream, or custards, or on your breakfast cereal. I don't mind buttermilk so much. You suit yourself, as long as you take the equivalent of one quart of milk a day. Iron and other minerals are found in green vegetables. The various vitamins that are necessary for normal health are found in fruits and vegetables, not so much in potatoes or starchy foods. I like fruits and vegetables. That's good. And you're getting along nicely. I'll see you next month. Goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye. Well, Mary, have you thought about things for your baby? Oh, not a great deal. I suppose I should. Let me show you something. Of course, you're going to need diapers, scads of them. They should be about two feet square, like this. And then there's a little shirt. Isn't it cute? Cotton. We believe that cotton undergarments are the only things that should come in contact with a baby's skin. But I always thought baby's clothing should be made of wool. Well, the outer garments may be made of wool and silk, but it's not absolutely necessary. Are these expensive to buy? Not very. You can cut them out and make them yourself if you like. These are the bands to put around the abdomen. You'll notice they're made of cotton, too. And here are the little stockings. Of course, if you like, you can make a little knitted cap or knitted shoes for baby's dress up day. And of course, you must have a little bed with blankets of the right size. One way is to take a clothes basket and quilt it so that the baby may be protected from dry. Oh, I'd better start thinking about things. Maybe I'll stop into a little shopping before I go home. What you've said has been a great help, Julia. Dr. Wilson speaking. My wife is suffering dreadfully, Doctor. Now, what's the matter with her? She has a terrible headache and... Headache? And she's expecting a baby in about a month. Oh, that's different. Are her legs and face swollen? 
I see. Well, I guess I'd better come right over. Come in, Doctor. My wife is upstairs. How do you do, Mrs. Kate? Oh, it's just it's so nice of you to come out this other night. Yes, indeed, Doctor. All right, and I'm glad to do it. I'm sorry you're not feeling so well. <laughs> I'm going to come to you. That's it. Uh, wash this off, please. Why didn't you send for me earlier? I thought I'd get better, but I had a bad pain in the pit of my stomach tonight. Any other complaints? My feet are swollen. How far along are you? About eight months. Has your wife seen the physician before, Mr. Case? I didn't think it was necessary, Doctor. I have two other children, and we didn't call a doctor until the babies were almost ready to be born. A little attention throughout pregnancy is always worthwhile, Mrs. Case. If you had had attention, all this might have been prevented. Have you any other symptoms? Sometimes I feel awfully dizzy, as though I were going to faint. But a kind of blackness comes over my eyes, and I see something like black spots dancing in front of them. Your blood pressure tells me that. If you'd seen your doctor sooner, he'd been on the lookout for those things. You know, it's much easier to prevent headaches and spots before the eyes and high blood pressure than it is to cure them. I'll know better the next time. I'd like a specimen, please. Your wife's condition is rather serious. It's too bad because it could have been prevented. Well, you see, Doctor, we thought because our other children... You're lucky. Your wife's blood pressure is very high. I expect mm -hmm. you'll find a great deal of albumin in her urine. We must keep her in bed and regulate her diet. A little medicine, perhaps. She's not going to die, Doctor. I think not. With good care, everything will be all right. But she must follow my instructions exactly. You're feeling quite chipper, hmm, Mary? Oh, I'm fine. But I'm beginning to wish it were all over. <laughs> <laughs> Only one more month, Mary. Dr. Wilson asked me today if I'd drop around and tell you about the things needed for the coming of your baby. You know what I mean. How to fix the bedroom so that everything will be in readiness. Would you like to see my bedroom? Yes, I would.
Well, of course, a great many things would be necessary, such as having extra clean bed clothes and... Oh, oh, but I don't have to tell you that. Well, I try to keep things clean. I think I'll have enough. Oh, my, yes. And then we have to think about light. That light in the center of the ceiling will hardly be enough. You might have John fix up some extension lights so we'll have all the light needed when the baby comes. And of course we're going to need a great deal of sterile water. That means boiling. I suppose you have plenty of kitchen utensils, you know, kettles and large boilers. We have plenty of things for that, sir. This may seem rather foolish, but I assure you it has a definite purpose. All the rugs should be removed from the room. So that seems clear. Well, we want to prevent any possible infection. Of course, all the medical supplies that Dr. Wilson and I bring with us will have been sterilized before we come. But your part is very important. And I'm sure you'll do everything you can to get things in readiness. You've been very helpful, Julia. I'm so glad you've told me about all this. Well, I'll have to be going. We'll expect to see you at the office again within a few days. We calculated your baby was due sometime in April, didn't we? That's what Dr. Wilson said. I suppose this will be my last visit for a while, Dr. Wilson. Well, perhaps it is. And for your sake, I hope so. Suppose we take a final blood pressure. Have you been troubled at all with your ankle swelling, Mrs. Burgess? No, Doctor. Doctor, I'm beginning to wonder about the coming of my baby. Huh? Oh! There's a series of uh, pictures in there that I'm sure will interest you. In these drawings, you see, as through a window, the baby lying in the uterus. When labor begins, the uterus contracts only slightly and at relatively long intervals. Each contraction is followed by relaxation of the muscles. The labor pains come and go periodically, and slowly the mouth of the uterus begins to open. All these changes are very gradual, but as labor progresses, the baby's head descends into the birth canal. As it does so, it undergoes a slight turning motion. Why does the head turn? In order that the baby may pass more easily through the birth canal. Looking from above downward, these pictures show how a baby is born. At the proper time, the tissues accommodate themselves to the gradual passage of the child through the birth canal. The head emerges slowly. This is followed by one arm, then by the other arm, and finally by the trunk and legs. The child is still attached to its mother by the umbilical cord through which it has received nourishment while in the uterus. The hand of the doctor supports the baby, and he holds the new life as the baby comes into the world. Does the baby's head always come first? Well, that is the normal way. The baby's head is large. The bones of the head, fortunately, are flexible and may be molded slightly to permit passage. Within a short time, delivery is over, and you'll forget whatever pains you had in the happiness of having your own child. Of course, we'll give you something to ease the pain. I hope so. The ideal way to relieve all pain has not yet been found, so the physician must choose that anesthetic suitable to each individual. When you start having pains in the abdomen, it'll mean that the time for the birth of the baby is rapidly approaching. 
The pains I speak of are contractions of the uterus to expel the baby. These are normal, regular pains, and at the beginning occur about once every 10 minutes. Now, when you're sure your pains are regular, call me. Now, suppose we have an abdominal examination so that I can be certain of the position of your baby. Norton, will you prepare Mrs. Burgess, and as soon as you're ready, call me. Yes, Doctor. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Miller? Mrs. Burgess is ready, Dr. Wilson. I'm going to listen to your baby's heartbeat. His position seems quite normal, Mrs. Burgess. Now suppose we see how much you weigh. I'll be expecting a call from you soon, Mrs. Burgess. I hope it will be very soon. Oh, you'll see in one no. of the medical yes. <laughs> I didn't think it was, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, would you excuse me a moment? I'll go, dear. Oh, thank you. The telephone. Hello? Is this a Dr. Wilson's residence? Who's speaking, please? Oh. Well, can I take a message? Oh, just hold the wire a moment, please. <laughs> yes, well, that's of course. Come to anybody. Yes, sir. Telephone. Oh, excuse me for a moment, please. I hope this isn't going to break up our bridge. Hello? Oh, yes. Well, how frequent are they? No, there's nothing to worry about. You're just at the beginning of labor. Now, be as calm as you can. My nurse and I will be there in an hour. Goodbye. Hello, Julia. Have you got everything? I think so, Doctor. Well, I suppose we're in for another night of it. I hope the baby comes soon so we can get some sleep. I only wish we had a good hospital. Someday we're going to build one. Someday when people realize how important a good hospital is. Now perhaps next year we can make the council see the light. Mrs. Burgess. How frequent are your pains? About every five minutes.
have you boiled any water, Mr. Burgess? Yes, Mary said we'd want some, and I have a couple of kettles on the fire now. Well, we'd better have some more. Things are progressing very nicely, young lady, but it'll still be some time before the baby comes. While Miss Norton is preparing things, I'll go downstairs for a while. I'll tell her to give you something to make you more comfortable. She'll call me when necessary. Oh, this is my first experience. I, I feel like I'm going to have a baby myself. Too bad you can't substitute for your wife, eh? Well, I'll tell you, Doctor, about the worst nine months I've ever been through. First time is always the hardest. I only wish we had a hospital. It would be so much simpler. Not only for the doctor and the nurse, but for the mother and the father, too. <laughs> when it's almost time for the delivery, the couple would go to the hospital, where a trained nurse would take charge of the expectant mother, and the husband would be relegated to a separate room. For all husbands do get in the way sometimes. In the right kind of a hospital, all the maternity cases are separated from the rest of the patients. This minimizes the danger of infection. Infection is a very real thing in childbirth, you know. Infection in childbirth? Yes, infection. Germs. When you have a cold or a sore throat, there's always danger of passing it on to another person. But in a good hospital, these dangers are almost entirely eliminated. Everything we use is sterilized with heat to kill the germs. Gowns, bedclothes, even the mattresses. And smoke, doctor? No, thanks. Uh, you were saying, doctor, about the hospital. Well, and owing to the restricted visiting hours of a hospital, the mother isn't worried by over-anxious friends. The trained nurse carefully watches the progress of her labor and faithfully reports to the attending physician. The expectant father, who is rather useless at this stage of the game, sits and sits. It's probably hard on him, but most of them are able to take it. Doctor, I think everything's just about ready. You wait here, and if we need you, we'll let you know. something else for my pain. Yes, in just a moment. But we must be especially careful, as too much drug may affect your labor and the baby. The pain's are getting harder and closer together. We'll soon give you some relief. I hope so. I'll try to rest between pains and relax. Your baby is almost here now. Try the cord.
get the silver nitrate. Well, it's all over. Eight and a quarter pounds. My baby now. Am I? Isn't he a darling? It's a girl, Mary. Oh, sure, it's a girl. Have you given Mrs. Burgess the hypodermic yet? No, not yet. But I will in a moment. Has it come yet? She's here. She? She, uh... She... She's funny looking, isn't she? <laughs> How's Mary? May I see her? No, not yet. But we'll be through in just a few moments. Now you must be very careful for the next few days, Mrs. Burgess. It'll take a little time for your organs to get back to normal size. Stay in bed, of course. You've someone to help you, haven't you? No, nothing like that. That's fine. You'll just lie quiet and everything will be all right. I'm going to examine the baby now. I'll be back tomorrow. in bed quite a bit, Mary. I'll give you a few exercises so your muscles will be in better tone when you get up. I think we should learn a little bit about taking care of the baby, too. I'll be awfully glad if you'll show me everything I need to know.
Here's your baby. Hello. Oh, Paul, good morning, Doctor. Good morning, Dan. I was just leaving for the office. How is Mrs. Burgess? Oh, just fine, Doctor. Go on up. You know the way. Good morning, Mrs. Burgess. Good morning, Doctor. Well, you're looking exceptionally bright this morning. You see, you've been in bed ten days, haven't you? Yes, and I'm just about ready to get up. Why, well, you've been up today, haven't you? Julia was teaching me how to care for the baby. I'm so glad because I never had any little brothers and sisters to care for when I was a girl. Well, a new mother has so much to learn. But Miss Norton and I will try to get you off to a good start. Well, I've tried to be a pretty good patient, Doctor. And succeeded, too. From now on, you must take a special care of yourself. You're nursing your baby, which is indeed fortunate. Fortunate? Isn't that natural? Yes, natural. In spite of the fact that some women do not nurse their children, there's nothing that can excel breast milk. It's the best of all possible foods. And it's cheap, for one thing. <laughs> not only that, mother's milk is always sterile, and the temperature is always right. After all, it's baby's own food that nature has devised. I have so much to be grateful for. You must do everything you can to make milk for your baby. Eat nourishing food with plenty of meat and milk. Lots of vegetables. Drink all the water that you wish. Try not to get nervous or excited. And above all, keep your habits regular. I do want to nurse my baby. Although you're getting up today, you must be quiet until the baby is three weeks old. Don't tire yourself or it may spoil your appetite and interfere with your nursing. You must come to see me at my office when the baby is six weeks old. And be sure and let me know if you have any trouble. Thank you, Doctor. You've been so kind and patient. I'm sure everything's coming along nicely. Mm -hmm. And I'm so happy to have my baby. I know you are. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, Doctor. Oh, Mary. You wake the baby. You haven't noticed my new dress. Why, that's wonderful, darling. And you're just as slim as you used to be. Good. More beautiful. <laughs> How old is she now? I went to see Dr. Wilson for my follow-up examination this morning, and he said I'm perfectly all right. He's telling me. Oh, Mary, you've been such a wonderful sport. <laughs> 